Oh, welcome to the video on constant rate filtration. Uh, this explains the technique that's used in the simulation at Particles Org UK for the constant rate filtration process. Um, the first few slides are fairly similar to uh, what's in the video where we looked at constant pressure filtration. So <clears throat> I'm not going to repeat myself uh, if you want uh, greater information on these slides, first few slides, then please do look at the constant pressure filtration uh, video. Um, just very, very briefly saying that this is important. We're going to um, use solids concentration by volume fraction, and uh, that's big capital C. So uppercase C is the volume of solids divided by the total volume present in the bed. So here is our bed of solids. OK, so total volume of the bed and uh, we divide the solids volume by that total volume of the bed. That gives us our solids concentration. And if we have a successful filter, we're expecting the bed height to increase with respect to time as the filtration goes on, as the filtration progresses. OK. Well, here is our general filtration equation. It makes no assumption uh, about operating under constant pressure or constant rate. Um, we looked at how that, into, that became the uh, equation for constant pressure in the previous video, the one on constant uh, pressure filtration. We're talking about constant rate, so we need to do that. And if we have consider the constant rate then we'll have pressure drop over the filter cake and filter medium that's the total pressure drop increasing with uh, in order to overcome the resistance due to the um, due to the increasing filter cake height so we have a term here which is the pressure drop over the filter cake and a term here which is pressure drop over the filter medium so the so this really is a simply a statement of the total pressure delta p is equal to the pressure drop over the filter cake plus the pressure drop over the filter medium and as the pressure drop over the filter cake is increasing because v the independent variable there is increasing. V is the cumulative volume of filtrate. So as V is increasing, therefore clearly the pressure drop over the filter cake is increasing. That's logical because we know the cake is getting higher and higher and higher. So we know that's going to have a greater and greater resistance to the filtration. OK, so we have a, it's a linear equation, Y equals MX plus C again. But in this instance, it's pressure that's linear with respect to filtrate volume. So this is the, the working equation then that we're going to be using. Um, I'm using little lowercase q for the filtrate rate. There's a little bit, say a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, and then we've got two important terms down here, which are the specific resistance and the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate inside the cake. So it's kind of related to the cake concentration. OK, um, now if we were assuming incompressible, then we wouldn't need average values. But the simulation is open. It doesn't make the inherent assumption of being uh, incompressible. It can cope with compressible cakes so long as they follow the constitutive equation. What do I mean by that? Well, here is the constitutive equation for the specific resistance. So um, let's think about this term n. If we had an incompressible uh, system, if we, we can simply say that n is equal to naught, then it would, it would have no dependency on the pressure drop. Uh, 1 minus n would be uh, 1, and we just simply define alpha average equals alpha naught. Uh, that would be our incompressible statement. The specific resistance stays constant regardless of whatever the pressure drop is over the filter cake. Uh, yeah, this delta P here should really be delta P C because it's the pressure drop over the cake rather than the total pressure drop. 
Um, well, there is actually uh, some lookup tables on the website for common materials. So you might actually find the uh, your material or something similar to your material in the lookup table and you might find the values of the constituent uh, the values needed for the constituent equation there the values of alpha naught and n so uh, that's available in the uh, subdirectory uh, filtration on that website so that's worth having a look if you if you're stuck for um, if you know your material is compressible and you're stuck for values of that uh, equation same exactly the same thing's true for the concentration by volume fraction here we're using u rather than n again put a value of zero in will give us c equals c average equals c naught and that's uppercase because it's by volume fraction the dimensionless volume fraction um, and that would be com that would be incompressible um, however, if we do have a value of u, then we've got some degree of compressibility. Again, there's the lookup tables that could be used for the common materials. Well, that's volume fraction concentration, not dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate. So we need another equation uh, that relates the two, how the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate relates to the average concentration. And we have that here. Here are our average concentrations um, that we talked about on the previous slide. The only other thing we need apart from the densities of the solid and the liquid is the slurry concentration, this thing little s, um, and that is the slurry concentration by mass fraction. Unusual to use mass fraction in particle technology but we do so here simply out of pragmatism because it's dead easy to get a, a sample of a slurry to uh, weigh it, to dry it, to weigh it again and that simply gives us the, uh, the mass fraction very simply. So the equations left in terms of mass fraction because that's the easy thing to actually measure. And if we know that slurry mass fraction and we know those uh, densities and the average concentration by volume fraction then that gives us the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate. A little c term just there okay well when solving the problem we have a, a slight problem in that we know that with compressibility we potentially are going to have to have values of alpha and c that change with each increment the way we'll solve the problem rather than breaking it up into uh, increments in time will break it up into increments of pressure okay so the method of solution is to break it up into increments of pressure and then to work out what the time is uh, needed for those pressure increments so don't forget this equation that's uh, that's up here is uh, pressure drop over the filter medium pressure drop over the filter cake total pressure drop and we're going to break it up into increments of the total pressure drop and then work out what our volume of filtrate is and the time at which we've achieved that volume of filtrate from our equation here. First thing to do is to bear in mind that we need to um, take into account that the feed rate is not going to be equal to the filtrate rate. Why? Because we are leaving solids in a filter cake. So if we didn't leave solids inside the filter cake, little q, the filtrate rate, would be the same as the feed rate, capital Q. But it won't be the same because we've got a solids cake that consists of water retained or, or liquid retained um, as well as solids retained in the filter cake. So we need to take that into account. So there's going to be a, a, a lower value of filtrate compared to whatever the feed rate is into the system. OK, well, how do we start the iterative solution off? Well, we don't bother about that correction to start with because at the very start of the filtration, so this is only applicable at the start, we have no cake, so therefore we can use our capital Q. We don't have to take into account anything that's been deposited. And the pressure drop, the total pressure drop, is simply going to be the pressure drop over the filter medium 
and therefore if we know what the filter medium resistance is we can work that out for a certain feed rate okay um, once we've got that we can then start to do our cal calculations for concentrations and therefore correct for the um, filter rate rather than the feed rate that's going in so that's what we do in the first pressure increment then how do we solve the rest of it well the, the important equation is this one here because what we're trying to do is to calculate the pressure drop over the filter medium okay and the way we'll do that is we'll use the previous increments filtration rate the filtrate rate for the previous increment to work out what the pressure drop is over the filter medium okay um, and that then gives us if we come if we drop down to this equation if we know what delta pm is and if we know what the, the total pressure drop is which is there i've put the increment i've put the subscript t onto that so the to total pressure drop then that means that we take the filter pressure drop over the filter medium uh, away from the total pressure drop that gives us our pressure drop over the cake and of course it's that pressure drop over the cake which dictates what the terms are for specific resistance and dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate from the constituent equations and we just repeat that calculation at all the increments of that we're solving the problem over uh, until we've achieved the required total pressure or required total time for the, uh, the for the filtration. Okay, so that's the method that is used in the uh, simulation at um, particle org www.particles.org.uk um, in the um, online simulation for constant rate filtration. And it's a technique that you could use in a spreadsheet if you had to do your own analysis of constant rate filtration, uh, taking into account variation in pressure. And that's it. Thank you very much.